We are on a mission, a mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Podcast, we dive into current events that are shaping how pharmacists approach their patients and their businesses. Fuel your passion for pharmacy one conversation at a time. Four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Welcome to the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Key, president of Pioneer RX, and today I'm here with Mark and Marsha. Hi, I'm Mark Bivens, vice president of sales for Pioneer RX. Hi, I'm Marsha Bivens, director of marketing for Pioneer RX. Today we're here with Derek Jensen, vice president of sales at RX Systems. I know you've met Marsha and me. Have you met Mark Bivens? I have yeah. a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, 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 re- I recall the first time we met, I think, was in St. Kitts. Yep. St. Kitts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got a, yeah. You got a good memory. Yeah, both and of I think you. Because both of you remember that. at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, yeah. just on vacation, per se. And, uh, you know, having a, having a good time. I just remember he loved cheeseburgers or something like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was at the best lobster in St. Kitts. It really was. The Shiggity Shack. Yeah. Shout out to the Shiggity oh, Shack. You remember the name of that? Yeah. Oh, Did you go there? That joint. Yeah, that joint or that dive. Or yeah, no, it was a total dive. Sh- but that that was the, a the lobster was, and I don't really like lobster, but it was amazing. Oh, they yeah. just split that thing open and like in the grilled, fired, something going on. Yeah, I love how they just look at you. Yeah, yeah. Not, not sketchy. It was a shack on the beach, and when the driver dumped us out there, he is like, "Uh, yeah, here's my number. I might be available." I don't. Yeah, know. those are the best places. I know we yeah. went to uh, one of the the best hot chicken places in oh Nashville, and and uh, oh yeah, shout out to the, Prince's then Prince's when, hot chicken. Yeah. yeah, was it Prince's? It was Prince's hot. Chicken. Yeah, and and so when the cab driver is like, "How are y'all getting out of here?" It's like, we're just going to get a cab. He's like, the cabs don't come here. He was literally like, he's yeah. like, I'm not coming back to yeah. get you. And I'm not What's coming pros, back yeah. to get you. Yeah. You so, go for lunch, not for dinner to those kind of places, right? Yeah. We were yeah. there for dinner. Yeah. Oh, it, it was, was fine. It was daylight. Was it dinner? It was dinner. Because after that, we got an Uber. It was, an it was a bunch of yuppie people in there. It was an early dinner. It was a bunch yeah. of people like us in there. It was still sunlight. It was still light out. But they yeah, had, that, talking about hot chicken, they had like seven scale. Yeah. Kind of like a co you know, to... To the, all the way to ghost pepper, probably. Yeah, but right. I think we got mild. Yeah, and and I was hurting, and like to lit Mark us on fire. Still sweating. Yeah, yeah. yeah was Mark hurting. was sweating. I saw they open a new restaurant in Vegas. That's a, uh, and I'm going to butcher this because I'm not French. But the, it's the it's it's no uh, it's français? cheese and charcuterie. Ooh, you know how they get Dibs. on TikTok yeah. and everybody argues about how to say. I don't know. But, I think you did pretty good. Yeah, charcuterie. Yeah, pretty good. I, 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 sounds, for Texas, hey, you know. For but, us, um, sounds right. It's got a conveyor, and the conveyor comes around with different meats and cheeses, and when you see one you like, you pull it off. Gosh. And you kind of build nice. your own. Oh, um, my gosh. That's awesome. So Great. you have a, a U.S. conquering map back behind you? <laughs> oh, right. You know, I do. I, I actually moved into my dad's office for a little more privacy, and he had, like, some golf painting or a picture up there that was all glossy, and I thought, that's – doesn't look good. So I'm kind of a geography guy. So I thought I'll just put my map behind me here. So uh, I just like, you know, seeing where I've been and where I'm going. Yeah. Do you have the little mat? Do you have the little pins in it? I don't see them from, from my. So I don't have pins in mine. Um, We do have another map in my dad's office here where pins, like where we have representation in the field and that sort of thing. Oh, wow. That's probably um, probably blacked out. Yeah. I've been pretty fortunate to travel uh, a lot in my career, even prior to working at Arc Systems. So I would have a lot of pins up there if I, uh, just like you guys would from all the travel shows. Yeah. Yeah. Marsha has a a pin thing that has a color where she's been and a color where she wants to go. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually, it's a really cool company I came across and it's, I forget the name of it, Map something, but you- You have to say it right if we're going to call them for a sponsorship. I know (laughs) it. Gosh darn it. But um, yeah, when you pick what size map you want, um, if you want it to be U.S. or global, and it says what color, what two color pins do you want to be? And so one, and then at the bottom you make your key, which is this is places I've been and places yet to adventure. Okay, what's Fe- on your top of your list? Future adventures. I want to yes. go back to Scotland. Well, um, it's a back to, so you'd already had this. So what's what's your future? Not that you gone to been? that I want to go. Uh, I, Paris, Italy. Just All put me stuff. on a trail that's like food and wine and cheese, and I'll be one happy girl. 
Tell us, uh, just kind of give us a little bit about your your background, Derek. You know, we, we sure. see you here and there and always enjoy talking to you, friendly guy, but I don't think we've ever had a time to say, hey, where'd you come from and how'd you get here? And Sure, yeah, I don't think we've had a chance to really catch up in that regard. So um, this RX Systems is a family-owned business. My dad started uh, 42 years ago. Um, I've been here for 22 of those. Um, never thought I would work here uh, growing up, uh, even though when we started in 1979, I would help out in shipping a little bit and that was back in the day. I was trying to think of some stories about, you know, the history of RX Systems. And when UPS would come pick up, uh, you know, I would literally be like handwriting in like, uh, you know, Pioneer RX and your address and all this other stuff, like on a carbon copy, you know, like log book. And then you would hand that sheet to the UPS driver when he left. You know, this is way before barcodes right. and way before this other stuff. So that goes back to 1979 when I was kind of doing that growing up a little bit. But, um, you know, I just never thought I would work here because – you either need to be a salesperson, which I don't look at myself as a salesperson, or more into the manufacturing side. And you can ask anybody that knows me. I don't know anything about, you know, fixing anything <laughs> or, uh, you know, how to do this. Like, you know, at my house, my my handyman is my wife. She handles all that stuff for us. You know, so, but um, you know, didn't think I'd ever work here. So I was more involved in travel and hotel and restaurant management. Actually, is what I kind of studied. Interesting. And uh, that's why I'm really interested in geography and traveling and things like that. And I just really love the the service side of that industry uh, as much as anything. And so I worked, uh, got my degree in hotel restaurant management. Uh, soon thereafter, graduating University of Missouri, I got a job at a place called Merritt's Travel Company, which is a very large uh, incentive travel company based in St. Louis, where I'm from. And uh, they would do a program for like, let's say, Nissan dealerships. If you sold if, if Jeff Key's Nissan sold 500 Maximas in this quarter, you got to qualify for a trip to Vegas or London or Hawaii or whatever. Okay. And we would go on we would go on site with those people. So that's why I was very fortunate to put a lot of pins in my map, per se, and uh, did that for about five years. Uh, really enjoyed the travel industry. Uh, in my late 20s, my dad's mother passed, and I was still at the travel company. And for some reason, that was like my wake up call to go to work at the family business. So my brother had already been here for a number of years. We got a sister, she's nine years younger. So she wasn't really a part of the, the equation at that time. Uh, she is now, she works here as well. But uh, anyway, that's just kind of my wake up call to kind of go to work for the family business. My my father had gently kind of recruited me over the years and I just politely said, no thanks, you know, at the time. But that was just kind of a wake up call and, I, and I'm glad I did. So, uh, you know, it's really worked out, it's been 22 years now. So you guys manufacture labels and sell labels? Correct. So we're a manufacturer. So yep. uh, my dad had worked for another uh, competitor 10 miles up the road for about six years in the 70s. And then he's like, you know, had his own vision thinking, hey, we can do this ourselves. We can do it a better way. And um, so he kind of started it with one person and built it up from there. We've got about 250 people now. We've got locations in five states. Wow. Primary manufacturing, Missouri and Arizona uh, for the California market. But, uh, but yeah, we, so we're we're half retail, half long-term care, I like to say. So the retail side, I would say, is labels like, as you very well know, uh, prescription bags, vials, uh, mm -hmm. pill counters. And then the other half is long-term care. So we make a lot of blister cards and other equipment for long-term care pharmacies. So uh, you guys are aware. I'm sure your listeners are. A long-term mm -hmm. care pharmacy could be found like in a business park, not in on Main Street, USA kind of a thing. Right. I'm curious about several things. So, sure. um, all right. So we have the icon, right? Is one sure. of the things you you sold. I'm not. We're not. We're going to figure out where that is today. And you have a new product. And there's a new product that's also a pill. Is it, so I the got I, I got a mild preview of it at Florida Pharmacy Association oh, a great. couple weeks ago. Um, but yeah, y'all have got a new product out. So tell us about that. Yeah, what's that one called? Sure. That was called the Vivid, uh, Vivid RX. Uh, it's out of a company out of New York. So, you know, we don't make the pill counters. We're not smart enough to engineer all that stuff, but we have been the leading distributor, no question of the icon since day one, which is in 2008, I believe was the first yeah. icon came on the market. Uh, Vivid rolled out, um, just over a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, the company out of New York, they go by different names, scientific industries or Torable, but a lot of the, again, your, your members, uh, customers will be familiar with like a Torable scale, like a, okay. the weight you put on the scale to pass, you know, a lot of times they need that kind of equipment to pass inspection, you know, that sort of thing. But it's the same company that makes the, the Torable, uh, scales. They make vivid. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's new. It's an up and coming. Uh, it's also a vision based pill counter similar to the icon. They just had a you know, slightly different features, but, um, it's just a new product to the market. Is that weird being a distributor of both of those products that kind of compete against each other? 
We, we are going to distribute both of them, correct, because they do currently fit different markets. Um, you know, Icon sets the bar. Icon is, you know, been number one for, you know, 10 plus years right. and it's still number one. Uh, they just roll out a new color model, right? Uh, that can help with telepharmacy or other things like that as well. So Icon is, is oh, nice. number one uh, and Vivid's an up and comer. So, um, you know, they're. So does a Vivid kind of fill a price point? Is it kind of a, a lower price point than the Icon and therefore buy kind of, kind of like a gold and platinum At, kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It currently is. So, you know, there's other pill counters out that are sensor based uh, without saying names, but everybody knows who, who they are. Their initials are KL, right? So everyone knows who they are. And they, their, their price point is more in that, I would say, $5,000 range. Now, they have different levels of equipment as well um, at KL. But um, so the Vivid is more in that price point. Okay. Yeah, I remember it was one time. I don't remember how many years ago, but I asked Joe Moose. I was like, hey, Joe what's the first thing a pharmacy should do? And he actually said, get an icon. So, <laughs> Yes, huh. no, no question. We know pharmacies are struggling uh, with labor, with workflow, things like that. And the icon is perfect for that. Right. Well, like, so trade show, because we do screenshots uh, to kind of demonstrate and highlight the cool things we do. And I will say one of my favorite things to show off is the integration with the icon that it's great. We're going to pull up the prescription. You said you're, we, your bottle said 60, but you only counted 40. Okay, let's pull up the image. Pharmacies go nuts over that. They love it because they understand they have that that pain point. And so it's it's a wow. It's a wow factor. It, it is absolutely a wow factor. And I don't know if they go to that wow factor once a week or once a month, but they love it that it's in their back pocket, right? They, mm-hmm. can, they can go to it as needed. So, uh, yep. uh, yeah, that's always been, a like you said, a jaw dropper at the trade shows when you show them that. Mm-hmm. So how has COVID been for you guys? It's been okay. You know, as a company, uh, we have done well as far as, yes, we've had, um, you know, people miss shifts or have to quarantine, you know, whether they had it or relative, et cetera. Overall, you know, as a manufacturer, that scares you, right? You've got to keep manufacturing, right? Just like when it was announced, you know, in March of, uh, you know, 20, we had our best March ever. Well, that's just because everyone was over ordering, right? right they were right. afraid they're going to run out of supplies. Did that of, cause any it, supply right? chain issues for you guys? It would have had it, that trend continued, but mm-hmm. um, so no, we were able to then you know play catch up a little bit, and then of course everyone got over you know they over ordered, so then next thing you know it's kind of slow, right? So yeah. the, you know, so the biggest impact on us was and is still affecting us is on the long term care side. So again, I mentioned that's about half our business, and you know we even did a survey to some of our customers. Okay, at the peak of COVID, you know what percent were you down as far as you know your census, et cetera. I spoke to a guy yesterday. He said, it was, and it's a, "This is a major, major player in the industry." He said they were down thirty percent at one time. I mean, wow. that's yeah. that's huge. Yeah, uh, people, he thinks they're at people twenty brought now. their relatives home. Yeah. Yes, and now they got to have confidence to send them back, and for the homes to actually accept them. Right? They, mm-hmm. you know, do they feel comfortable yeah. uh, bringing them back on? So we feel that's definitely trending up. We had a really good um, uh, last quarter as far as um, our pill card sales and that sort of thing go. So um, you know, it's, it's trending up at. I don't know if it'll ever get back to where it was, but um, it, it's looking better than it was, you know, last fall, last summer, et cetera. So you think you don't know the long-term care business to get back where it was? Well, I'm just asking you to our, our customers, you know, do you think it'll get back to where it was? Some say no. Now, obviously they can go add new facilities and we can add new pharmacies, et cetera. Right. But, um, you know, that's just kind of their, their two cents. And that's just a handful of people, you know, that we, that we spoke with, but we sent a survey to, I think it's about 300 people replied about where they were, where they are now. And, you know, the overwhelming majority said it's, it's on the uptick. What about the pill counter sales during that time? So that's been very interesting. Uh, a lot of that, as you know, is related to the, the Marsha said, the, dro- the jaw dropping factor when you see it at a trade show for the first time. Now, Icon's been out there a long time, but but not everyone goes to trade shows, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, so then a lot of it's word of mouth and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, it definitely was a hit per se because – we wouldn't have that opportunity to, to, to do the face-to-face kind of a thing. Um, so we had other specials. We kind of did rollback pricing a little bit uh, a couple of years before that. And we actually had a very solid year. We got a great team uh, internally that works on our icon, uh, uh, three or four dedicated staff that kind of do all that for us. Plus, we have field reps out there that, that push it. So I was very happy in the end with where we stood at the end of uh, 2020 with Pill Connor sales. Uh, into 2021, now we're still where we – where we were last year with the trade show scenario. Yep. Uh, so, so Icon rolled out a brand new, the color model. It's a 9430. Mm-hmm. 
And it's it's Dynamo. It's a great model. And they had um, a trade-in special on the original model that um, was discontinued, I think, in 17 mm-hmm. and uses uh, XP. And it's just, you know, it's like a phone, right? You got to update it every once in a while. So so they had a special to update the icons. And uh, so we had some pretty good with that. But now, just like whether it's a, you're looking for a new car or new this, new that, they're having a hard time, as Mark mentioned, about well, how about supply chain things? And they're yeah. having a hard time with, I think, the motherboard and some other you know, things like that. Some some parts that are above my head, but they're just having a hard time sourcing some of those things. So there's definitely a backlog on delivery right now. There's, we're definitely still taking orders. Wow. But, um, you know, we got a lot of the new ones out there. But uh, I think right now, September is the next, uh, maybe end of September is the next time we we'll start really shipping again. Um, so it just comes down to the supply chain. It's just amazing how one thing affects another, the domino effect of COVID um, to a certain extent. Well, I think some of that is COVID. I think it was a fire. It was a combination yeah. of uh, plague events. Sure. So. The freeze in Texas, where you guys are from, yeah. upset yeah. resin. I mean, resin is up 150%. You, resin is what you make a plastic buy with. It's up 150% from one May to the next. That's insane. Yeah. Really? Okay. And because a lot of that was made in Texas? Well, because of the oil, right? And, right. and then I guess yep. when the freeze happened, it wasn't, and I don't know much about it, what I read or heard is, it wasn't like it froze and it got unfrozen a day or two later. That the freeze did damage, long-term damage that you right. had to kind of come out of uh, to get back to where you were. Yeah, that this big move as a country, I guess, started in the Lea Coca. I guess I said that right. I think so. Um, and this just in time, you know, we're going to do everything just in time, and so you've got this big organism that everything just kind of moves through. Doesn't have any. There, there's no buffers in it. Right. Everybody's mm-hmm. trying to minimize inventory and minimize supply. And, you know, we don't store any parts. We, it comes in the parts two days before we put it in the car. And and um, it's interesting right. to see if things will adjust. Uh, we've yeah. always kind of bought our hardware and stuff in, well in advance. We usually did mm-hmm. six months in advance. Now we're uh, doing almost, now we're doing almost 12. Uh, just because if we don't yeah. have if we don't have servers and workstations and cash drawers we don't do installs right correct and yep. lead times are very key no question and cash is cheap so you know having a little extra inventory isn't a you know the cost of cash is is not that much so i guess it i guess it depends on what you're trying to inventory but you know we obviously as a manufacturer we're, we've got truckloads of supplies coming in and you know you can't make a pill cart or a bag or, a, or you know whatever a blister without the supplies so our man we've already had like let's just say corrugated board for instance. Everyone mm-hmm. uses corrugated board, and yep. you can blame uh, uh, the mail order industry. I mean, when I say mail order, I'm talking like Amazon or that right, sort of right. thing. They're buying up all the boxes, right? So you know, we've had like three uh, increases on corrugated since last uh, uh, December. I think that's up like 20 percent. You know, we've gotten two or three in- increases on everything else we buy, whether it's foil or board stock or plastic, mm-hmm. uh, you name it. We're just getting hammered with these increases, and one thing I, I find unusual, if I had to have a price increase three years ago, I would be very skeptical about doing it. I'd feel bad about doing it. But this is kind of a survival thing where, you know, you can't just absorb right. three increases in six mm-hmm. months, right? And so, you know, luckily the customers, as far as I know, have been very accepting of it. They're not loving it, of course, right. but they understand at the same time. So that's that's been a key, you know, thing for us. Yeah, I think our last server order was up $600 a server. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's just, that's where we are now. You know, l- lumber up 150% as well and things like that. It costs like 20, 25,000 more to buy, to build a home if you wanted yeah. to. Um, place not a good time to build a home. Nope. Oh. Definitely not, which has put my parents on a freeze for that. But, yeah. um, so talking about trade shows and how your sales have, have kind of just simmered out. So what is the plan for trade shows this year for you guys? We saw you at Florida. Not yeah, you, so but I think but there's another small, so they're called the Southeastern Gathering, I think, is this weekend in Destin. So uh, my Florida guy, Steve, will be, C. Phillips, he'll be there. But, of course, we'll be at the NCPA. So, yep. you know, with, I'm sure you guys are like me, with the news of the Delta variant coming, it's like, man, are we going to get this show in or are we not going to get it in? You know, like yeah, I'm in St. Yeah. Louis and just yesterday we went back to a mask mandate in the city and the county of St. Louis. Um, yeah, so what is North Carolina? I wonder how North Carolina I, I don't know what how, their kind of politics is. I don't know. Come on, Salzman. You're supposed to keep up with like, this. You send all like, hey guys, there. send all the trade shows to Texas and Florida. Because trade conventions are different. Because they're, they're going to happen. Yeah. Well, some of the conventions and stuff follow the 
also followed the hotel policy, right. which is why we ended up canceling yeah. um, Connect in Nashville. Mm. In Nashville. Postponing. So. Postponing. Yeah. Postponing till next year. Right, right. Makes her yeah. feel better. So. so I haven't bought my airline ticket or I haven't booked a hotel yet, but we're excited to go to Charlotte. So we'll see uh, what happens over the next few weeks here. Weston is already sold out. And yeah, registration's up, I've, right? I put, they said that uh, attendee registration is up, mm-hmm. like way up. Um, yeah, I 40%. Put, yeah. Uh, same nice. time last, you know, same time last time they had one. Wow. Registration sure. is at 40%. 40. Yeah. 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 But yeah, just listening to the your all's podcast, uh, you know, every pharmacist you have on, they seem all pumped to go to the shows. The vendors seem pumped to go back to the show. Everyone's so bags are I packed. would imagine uh, NCPA is in a good in a good spot this year to be the only the only game in town. Well, the vendor registrations are not up. Yeah. So a tr- lot of companies still are no travel are not allowing travel. Not allowing travel, convention travel. Okay. So, so like uh, one of like I didn't see a booth for McKesson. I don't know that McKesson's allowing as a company, as a global company, is allowing trade show Interesting. right now. Okay. Um, so that'll be either some of that will happen last minute or they won't have as many vendors. Uh, right. So kind of good for us as long as the enrollment yeah, of the attendees I, is up. Yeah, right? I'm saying less <laughs> less, uh, less uh, vendors, more time with the customers. So. Okay, so you're going to have um, – wh- how – Normally, y'all do a 10 by 20. Are y'all going to go a little larger this year for NCPA? So I debated about that. Good question. And I'm impressed you know we do a 10 by 20 at that show. But um, I think that's still suitable for what we need. And based on prior attendance at that show, um, we've been NCPA for I don't even know how long, probably 40 straight years or longer. Mm -hmm. Uh, We enjoy the show. But as you guys are aware, it's the membership or the attendees there are a little bit different than maybe some of the other shows where they're maybe there for their CE or legislative affairs and things like that. Whereas you go to Art Cardinal RBC and they're like, what you got? What's your special? What's new? You know, they're really interactive with the booths. So I hope that the NCPA attendees, now some of them for sure are like, same way. What's new? What can you show me? Kind of yep. thing. Where I think a lot of them are just there to get their meetings in and other things. So I hope that kind of changes this year since they didn't have their wholesaler show this year right. or last year. Yeah. You right. know, kind of a thing. So we'll. I'll be very curious to how that goes. Well, yeah, Cardinal I does. Think the energy is definitely hyped up for. We, yeah. We didn't get People. PDS this year. We didn't get Cardinal Amer- or any of the wholesalers, like yeah. you said. So. I think everybody's like I said, got their bags packed. They're they're ready to hit the show, the floor running. Um, I hope I'm hoping it's you, gonna be kind of a PDS energy. What are you guys taking yeah. with you? What are you guys taking with you to uh, NCPA? So since again, since we're kind of fifty uh, fifty on retail and long term care, obviously NCPA is more uh, retail, obviously, but there's a lot of combo shops out there that okay. are servicing one or two of the local nursing homes. So we still bring a lot of our long term care stuff uh, for that. But you know, there's not always a lot of new stuff in packaging, unfortunately, right? So obviously you got one new thing be- you told us about. The Vivid will be new, of course. So, you know, I'm excited to show people that. So we'll have, obviously, the Icon and the Vivid there, and people can, you know, see them both, you know, uh, head-to-head, per se. Um, we always do, you know, we have field reps that we have about 20, 25 field reps. There are 1099 guys that are around the country that are going and visiting this store, that store, et cetera. They've got a territory. So when you go visit the pharmacist, then they don't always have the time. Maybe it's not the right time to talk to them about certain things. But at a trade show, they've got more – they're more open, okay? So – we are highly promoting not just branding, but say, for instance, marketing your other services on a, a custom bag. It seems, you know, kind of like, yeah, whatever. They get the bag and they throw it away. Okay. But just as people discussed on your podcast over and over again, you can't just dispense pills. You've got to be doing other services. Okay. So my question is, how do they know you offer point of care? How do they know you offer clinical services? How do they know you offer immunization? So, you know, if you make a nice looking bag, everyone's invested in their websites, and their logo, things like that. So why don't you just put that on a bag and have it a clean looking bag? We can print QR codes to get to your retail app, to RX Local, to whatever. You know, that helps with their workflow on the back end, right? Um, so we just kind of promote that. It's just a small upcharge from buying a generic bag. So anyway, that's one thing we definitely always promote at trade shows is, mm-hmm. you know, different ways of, you know, helping them grow their business. It costs them like an extra 10 bucks extra a month to upgrade from a generic bag to their logo bag. So again, they've invested in all these other things. Why wouldn't you market that to your, to your services? Well, how many of your customers walk straight into the counter, get their back, get their prescription and walk straight back out. They may not know you offer a vitamin program. You know, right. you guys do all the services, uh, 
that they may offer out there. What what is what are some of the cre- this this makes me go down a, a little bit of a different path then what what's some of the more creative things you've seen and done with some of these pharmacies? On as far as a custom bag, yeah, goes, as far as like mm-hmm. either custom bags or or custom anything when it comes to 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 the print st- print side of the house. Sure. So on the labels, as you know, you're very limited. Uh, the software companies tend to take up all the space right on, on the labels. I know, right? I know, so, we really do. <laughs> <laughs> we no, kind no, of no, not, it all. Not the software; it's the states and whatever their guidelines <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in your traditional label, you've got like three eighths of an inch of the space at the top to yeah. fit your logo on there. So if someone puts this intricate logo on their website and everywhere and they're like, I put that on my label. It's like, well, it's, we got three eighths of an inch. It's kind of, we'll do our best. Or do you have an alternate linear logo? You know, that sort of a thing. Um, so on the label side, you're more limited in what you can or, or can't do. Um, but on the bags, you know, we can do four color print. We're not process printing, but we do four colors. We can print on the back, print on the sides, again, add QR code. So it just depends. Sometimes it depends on how creative the pharmacist or their their art person is that they hired that they did with their logo. So we, of course, have our own art department. But oftentimes they're really, you know, that's their baby. They bought into yeah. it. They bought these new fancy colors and they like everything about it. And, you know, sometimes we have to let them know that, you know, you could print your fancy logo. It looks great at your website or on a business card because that's a different printing process. But when you're doing spot color print on a bag, we can't always, you know, match it exactly. But, you know, we always send them a proof. And what do you think? So, you know, really what we're promoting, you ask what's new or what's different. Again, it's, it goes back to the QR code and just promoting their their alternate services. And that may vary by by pharmacy. So, you know, really, we're, we're pumped on the QR code because we want people to use their retail app, which creates time for their staff, right? Everyone's talking about labor and, you know, how do I cut back costs? Well, labor is one key way to cut back costs. Nice. I remember you did a uh, um, a cap sticker, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, yeah. For some of that yeah, stuff so, as well. Yeah. So we're doing that a little bit. And so uh, these are what's called vial cap labels. So they'll fit on anyone's vials, not just ours, but you, you name your, your vial company. And the idea started with more about um, kind of, again, saving some of those phone calls back to the pharmacy or working with workflow. So like they're, they're just circular labels. They're about one and eighth inch. So our two most popular ones are uh, same drug, new look, and this is your last refill. Um, so the same drug deal look is I'm certain your software prints, uh, auxiliary label it says this medication may look different, different color, et cetera. But we all know not everyone reads those. Right. And so what happened is Mrs. Jones gets home and then she calls Mark. Yeah, Mark, uh, this pill is blue. It used to be red. You know, what's up? Oh, Mrs. Jones. Oh, that's the same pill, whatever. Okay. So now you just took one, two minutes out of your day to explain that where the, the same drug new look label, they just put it right on top of the vial cap. And, you know, you can't miss that thing. It's like looking you right in the face, right? You, so it says yeah. same drug, new look. So you know right away, okay, I'm at ease. It's, it's just a different generic kind of a thing. Then the other one is our last refill label where, again, someone comes in with an empty vial and says, okay, Mark, I need you to, to fill this. And maybe they don't understand the workflow you know, behind the pharmacy. Okay, we have to contact the physician. We need to get refill authorization. You know, we can't do this in five minutes kind of a thing. So or it's just a little reminder your, for them. You need to make your appointment with your doctor. Yes, yes. So... So that was just some basic stuff we're doing. We are trying to launch the next level of that where we are going to print because we have digital printing capabilities at our Arizona facility, which these labels now can have QR codes. They can be more specific for branding. Uh, They can talk about immunizations, things like that. So all we're we're doing now is we can do the labels. Now we have to figure out a way to apply them with a sensor on top of the caps as they're going through our press. So we're dialing it in. We've been working on it for a while. So I'm hoping to launch that by NCPA. So you ask what's new. Oh, I always hate to kind of say what's coming and then and I then not deliver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I know what so, you mean. so so super interesting. We we were in a meeting yesterday um, where they showed a NFC technology where you 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 bump this card with your phone and it it automatically brings up the link to it. And, and supposedly you could print those into business cards, some really pretty inexpensive. Um, I, I'm imagining that label in the top of something you put on the pill and you tap it with your phone and you get the patient education for it or. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I see. Or if you could put it in the cap. Yeah. Bounce it off the cap. If it's a vial. Yeah. Be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the cap labels are printed in advance. So it would be hard to uh, identify that with oh, that's the right. drug per se. Um, now there's a possibility, of course you could, you could, I'm not sure how this will work, but your, your top movers, your top, your biggest moving drugs where you could have individual labels for that and maybe apply it to the bag. But 
But you go on your software now, you can add a QR code, right? For yeah, the patient right. education yeah. section, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, well, this was better than a QR code because they just kind of bumped it with their phone. Just kind of came yeah, near it. Yeah, it's NFC technology. And yeah. it, it automatically sure. took them sure. to that and, link. And I don't uh, know what it was like in Texas, but, you know, Missouri during COVID, you know, when we promote these QR codes, originally the pharmacist said, yeah, but my patients don't know how to use a QR yeah, code. Yeah, no. Well, the last year, right, that's had to change, right? A lot more change, people. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You go to get a menu at the store or, you know, QR codes are everywhere, right? right. So even challenge, you know, uh, technically challenged people, you know, know how to use a, you know, get their phone app out and take a picture of it to look at a menu now. Well, imagine if that link, though, that, that NFC deal was in your bag, like attached to the bag. And you had a thing print on there that said, tap the bag with your phone to go to like RX Local or go to, to download our mobile app. Sure. Well, yeah. So the mobile app, that's again, that's one of the things we're trying to promote on the, the Vialcap labels is so we could do that on a bag right now where we can put a QR code for both Android and, and Apple to go to RX Local or name your refill app per se. Um, so, again, on the Vialcap labels, that's the same thing we're going to do is, you know, the beautiful thing about digital printing is. Currently, if we make a label says Jeff's Pharmacy and you say, OK, I want 24,000 labels. OK, we're making the same label over and over and over. But on the digital printing, you can have variable print where one label after next can be different, can have a different message because there's no printing plates involved. And so you can have variable messages. So we're going to offer five versions. So let's say you want your refill app as one, you want immunizations as one, and then just That's your brand is three of them or however you want to you know, break it down. But uh, but the print quality is amazing. So, yeah, you can. You know, the, the QR code, I can't remember the, the size, but it's about three-eighths of an inch. But it still scans and works great, so it'll take you right to the, to the refill app. So you could have, like, hey, I want six different messages going out to these patients. And Correct. Get in, and, and knock them all out. And in one bulk kind of printing method or production you have, you can, you can put that on every, I guess, six label. And then the other message, every six label. That's right. So, and another beautiful thing about that program when we get it rolled out, again, the only thing holding us up right now is the sensor with the registration because you want the label to be right in the middle of every cap and but you need production, high production speeds. Um, so we're making the labels with no problem. But um, so, yeah, so you want to you know, mix your messages however you want it for your vitamin program or, you know, what, yeah, whatever it may yeah. be, um, it can go on there. Cool. All right, my turn. I'm shifting the conversation. Yes, we need to take All a right. life balance <laughs> yeah. break. You're, you've been working for your dad. Your brother is also in the business True. and your sister. So yes. tell us about your family, your, your kids. What do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? What, what, what is Derek like outside of the Arc systems office? Sure. Sure. So as I mentioned, I love to travel. Of course, uh, it's in my blood and I'm always planning trips. So what's um, your favorite place to go? So that's, you know, like you can close your it, eyes and you can be walking the streets right now. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> so back to my travel days, um, my two favorite spots unquestionably were South Africa doing like a game viewing, like live game okay. viewing, like seeing elephants and rhinos and cheetahs and leopards and all that crazy Major stuff. Uh, oh, you're like in an open air uh, Land Rover and. Yes, the driver has a rifle right there, but there's a leopard walking by like three feet to your right, and you're just like standing still. It's like, can that guy get that rifle in time? You know, right. <laughs> just in case. But uh, so that's the most, that's the biggest rush I've ever had, just kind of being out on something like that. Uh, and then sheer beauty, you can't beat Switzerland, in my opinion, just with the lakes and the mountains and the trees. Uh, you know, it's just Switzerland's amazing. And and of course, Italy, like you mentioned, Marcia, uh, for the food, that's uh, that's the best. So I love to travel. Um, and I, you know, I got my favorite sports teams too in St. Louis. I'm a Cardinals fan, St. Louis Blues, uh, and University of Missouri Tigers are my big, my big teams. So, um, I live entertainment and, and, uh, and, uh, and trivia is one of my biggest, uh, uh, things as well. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. So, um, of the places that you have not traveled, where do you want to go? Sure. So that's easy because, uh, again, I've been very lucky to put a lot of pins in the map. So I'm, I'm down to three states uh, I haven't been to, uh, Alaska, uh, Montana, and North Dakota. So I'd like to knock those three off at some point. Um, and then uh, with my kids, um, I've taken them on a t uh, I've got an 18-year-old son who's going to start college in three weeks. A uh, 16 year old daughter and a 13 year old daughter. So um, with them, I've always I've done a 10 year birthday trip with just me and them. Interesting. Uh, and then we're going to do a 20 year trip as well. So the 20 year, we're hoping uh, to do more of an international style trip. So I know my son wants to go to Scotland and Ireland. Uh, we've got some heritage there, and I know Marsh and you mentioned Scotland again. So I've never been to Scotland, 
and he loves golf, so that's the reason he wants to go uh, oh, yeah. to those two places. So, <laughs> so, uh, so the castle tour was really cool up there. We were in uh, Glasgow for a pharmacy conference, and then um, we just so we can get adjusted to the time zone because six hours is, is a sure. big difference. Um, we took a day and took the train to Edinburgh for the day and walked the Royal Mile, and that was really cool. Just the castles are so freaking cool to me. What's the Royal Mile? Um, the Royal Mile in Edinburgh, it starts at um, the Edinburgh Castle, and then there's just this strip, this one road, and it's a mile, and it goes down to this other castle that um, Queen Elizabeth like will spend a week. <laughs> oh, it's literally a road built for royals? <laughs> okay. yes. yeah. Well, right, I mean, right. there's a bunch of right historical on. stuff okay. down along the way, but I mean, the Edinburgh Castle is really, no, really yeah. old, but then this other castle, it's it goes back to before Mary Queen of Scots and she used to stay there and you can go through that history and all that. But apparently it's where Queen Elizabeth spends like a month out of the summer. Yeah. It's real weird. There's tunnels and it's very built up on the sides. Mm -hmm. um, it was super interesting. Yeah. Um, the unusual there though was they spoke English that I couldn't understand. Right, right. So <laughs> it's like, what do you, how do you do that? Do you put like, marbles in your mouth or I, it, yeah i don't get it either i don't get it. even some tv shows right on netflix or whatever sometimes you gotta put the subtitles on for those english shows just to make sure yeah. you understand it all you have to watch graham norton really well before you go i guess something. i don't know <laughs> well london like london is they're easy to understand but when you get up into scotland and like you're standing there ordering starbucks and you normally look at like you know the nuts and the chips and that kind of stuff and they repeat your order back to you and you're like sure I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, yeah the worst And they were repeat it exactly like that, and you're like, yep, that sounds good, do that. Yeah, that was a taxi <laughs> driver that I had no, that was just Hope you're nothing. going the right spot. There was just, there was yeah. nothing that was going to happen where I was going to understand what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. the dialect I is think, definitely a lot thicker up there. Yeah, I think I'll have to remember to order by app by then, right? That way you get your order in properly, right? But, For real. Um, but beautiful, <laughs> beautiful country, beautiful countryside, and the castles are just so freaking cool. Are you what's what's yeah. the what's the series? The well, so one of the castles that we visited, uh, Game of Thrones was shot there, um, and Outlander. Yeah, are you an Outlander fan? I have not watched a, uh, a lot of those English shows. Uh, my favorite current show. English show is Ted Lasso. If you guys watch that one on Apple TV, it's more of a comedy. But uh, I haven't watched um, The Crown okay. or any of those. I heard they're great. So I would watch, before going to Scotland, I would watch at least a season or two of Outlander. The first season. Cause it, it's the only on, one, there's only one castle. Well, the one castle that they shot on that we went through, it was only that one season. Yeah, they're, they're very proud of that show. They're very um, proud of that, that show. That they created. So they're Outlander tours. Uh, yeah. but you'll see a lot of the castles and a lot of the stuff, uh, in that series, uh, that's in there. And it was, it was, it was, it was the, you watch the whole thing. What do you mean? Just watch one season. Well, like I said, the one castle that we toured, that was the one that they pretty much shot the first season at. And they were very proud of it. Their gift, the gift shop was mainly around that show. Gotcha. I'll have to check out. So your son's a golfer. Cool. That's, that's where y'all are going for. <laughs> Yeah, he is, and uh, my, my daughters are getting involved in it now uh, as well. So that's nice. I'm not nice. a big golfer; I like to play, but it's it's right. something the whole family can do, right? And and my wife plays, and so or you can do as you get older in life, you know, kind of a thing. So that's it. That's Andrews St. Andrews Golf. Um, yeah, there's a lot of courses. Well, up there, the, like, what's the one course in Scotland yes. where golf is? St. Andrews. Yeah, St. Andrews. Yeah, the old Andrews. course. Yeah, the old course so. yeah, that's that's Mark's bucket list. So is he that wants the, to is go that the big the one? <laughs> That is the old course, right? Mm -hmm. So old I, course. I'm not sure, but I think you you go there without a guaranteed tee time, and you get like in a lottery. I you think do. That's how it works. You do. Oh, it's wow. like a drawing thing. It's yeah. it's it's kind of risky to get, like risky as in like you might waste your time, but you can still get to go. Yeah. But yeah, I, that's what I've heard too. Unless you can pull strings or something like that. Um, do you have to does it do you up your odds if you wear a kilt? I don't, I don't know. Is it, I, don't, I don't know if you get a hometown advantage. Is it a, is it a, is it a, kilt, re, a kilt required? Right. Yeah, a red hair. Yeah. A kilt required yeah. course. Maybe yes. dye your hair red before you go. <laughs> Talk differently. But yeah, I don't know. yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. I look forward to going back. When do you think y'all will do that? Uh, so he's just eighteen now, so that'll be in a couple of years. Okay. Uh, when he'll be twenty, and my daughter is sixteen, just kind of penciled in Paris. We'll see. And the 13-year-old, we haven't really decided yet. I, we struggled just to get her away from her mom for her 10th birthday trip. So we just went to Disney, the two of us, right? See, 
she likes to do everything with everybody. And so we finally settled on a, a place the two of us could go together. We went to Disney and did the roller coasters and everything like that. So we'll see where we end up with her. So, but nice. you know, this summer we went out west and did a. Uh, I love going out west lately. I mean, I, the rest of my family loves the beach. I'm not a beach guy, but uh, I love going to whether it's Wyoming or Colorado, et cetera. So this summer we just went to Colorado and Moab, Utah for about a week and Telluride and Vail, Aspen, et cetera, and just really kind of showed them a little bit of everything, yeah. a lot of driving, but showed them a little bit of everything. So, you know, when they get older and they go back, they're like, oh, yeah, I really like this spot or that spot, and they can go go there. So Yeah, we did a vacation uh, um, in uh, Colorado last year, and it was it was fun. Horseback riding and and whitewater rafting and kind of fun. My wife has a uh, my wife's sister has a house in Eagle. So oh yes, of, right near Vail. Yes. Right, so we kind of yep. hung out in that area and it was a nice COVID vacation because a lot of most everything was outdoors and. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. right. Was still, what about podcasts? Uh, you said you've watched a couple of ours. Uh, are there other podcasts that you watch? Um. If I do, they're more about entertainment or sports based. Um, I have listened to one or two of the people that have been on your show. And so, of course, I listen to Beyond the Script as well. Now, that's a little more over my head, but I just listen to it just to learn more about the industry, per se. Um, I can't remember the fellow's name out of Pennsylvania you guys had on. It has an independent pharmacy uh, podcast. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. But uh, so I'll, I'll listen to a few of them, a few about work, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, you work at a company and you know, just like the, your customers, a the pharmacist, they go to school for pharmacy, but next thing you know, they're in accounting, they're in HR, <laughs> they're right. doing other things they weren't trained to do. So I'll try to listen to a few of them, especially about HR uh, matters, because that's definitely not my specialty. And I just want, you know, you just want everything to go smooth, but that's not the way it works. So, uh, so I listen to a few of those things. They're, they're just short snippets, 20 minutes here and there about different topics and how to deal with certain things. But, uh, you know, if you're doing some driving or you're at the gym or whatever, it's just, Good way to kill the time. Yeah, I think we're – isn't NCPA having a, uh, their show in St. Louis in a year they or two? Are. Mm-hmm. They yeah, are. They so, are. So what's fun to do in St. Louis? We'll give a give a preview for people. Sure. So St. Louis isn't like Nashville or some of those other cities where everything's kind of congested. Like you walk at your door, like boom, 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 everything's right there. You're going to have to get in the Uber or do this or do that to hit – the cool restaurants on the Hill area, which is like our Italian district or Central there. West End, which is okay. a very cool area. So you're going to have to take a five or 10 minute ride somewhere uh, to get to some of those places. Uh, of course, we have, um, you know, uh, the Cardinals and Bush Stadium, the Blues Hockey are right downtown as well, if the timing works out for that. But, um, you know, it's a lot of family uh, people come here as well from, you know, Arkansas, rural Missouri, Illinois, et cetera, for we have Six Flags. Our zoo is amazing, and it's free, actually. Nice. So you go to, like, San, San Diego Zoo, you spend 40 bucks a head, and St. Louis Zoo is free, and it's to me, it's just as good. Um, and so it's a super cool zoo we have here. So, you so know, St. Louisans are zoo. kind of provincial. They're, do go to the they, they stay here. They're born here. They stay here for the most part. I was actually born in Minnesota, but we moved here in, uh, when I was three years old. So, What so. about um, any cool museums? Yeah, absolutely. There's a great art museum. So Forest Park is our main park. I failed to mention that that's where the zoo is actually located. And it touches and abuts up against the Central West End. But it's a very cool art museum, absolutely. Uh, that's where we, in 1904, we had the Olympics and the World's Fair were at Forest Park. So Forest Park is like our central park, like of New York per se. Um, so it's just a really cool area, some paddle boats, you know, bike trails. Uh, you know, there's an outdoor concert venue Ooh, there. Paddle so boats. Forest Park is very cool. Paddle boats are fun. Yeah. We're doing paddle boats. What's, what's kind of your, like, I've been to the hill over there. I think it's called the hill, right? Where all that Italian it food is. It's freaking amazing. It was, you know, I, I've only, I can't remember if I've ever been to like any crazy Italian district. You took me to New York one time, but I don't think we really ate anything yeah. Italian wise, but what's, what's one of your best restaurants there? Sure. So, uh, there's, a, there's a lot, so I don't want to offend anyone, but the, the, the <laughs> namesakes that people always go yeah, to. Yeah, are don't Charlie, af- yeah, yeah, I know it's kind of controversial, <laughs> like question probably yeah. <laughs> for St. Louis Char- people. Charlie Gito's is for sure on the list and that's mid to upscale and then Canetto House of Pasta, Canetto, C-U-N-E-T-T-O, Canetto House yeah. of Pasta is more yeah. casual, that's the one I've been but the food is equally as good, you know, yeah. kind of a thing. So, um, if you've ever been to Boston, uh, uh, they have the North end district. So right. it's kind of mm-hmm. similar where you've got restaurants mixed in with, with single family homes or apartments right. or whatever. It's similar, but different. So, uh, but the Hills very, um, uh, popular area, uh, you know, for family dinner celebrations, you know, just for whatever. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, yeah I went to Canetto. That's where I was. 
You have a farm of animals? We do. We have, uh, I, I, this is embarrassingly, um, in a suburban home, by, my, might I add, uh, two dogs and four cats, two one children. The, one yeah. cat's outside. Yeah. All right. Although right now she's... And now a bird. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was wondering if you're going to take chickens. Chickens are becoming more popular in this area. We actually That's have 10 of them at our house. And uh, we have three dogs. You have uh, ten chickens. No cats. We have ten chickens. Ten chickens. I used to know all their names, but I don't. I don't. I don't think I can come up with them all right anymore. But uh, we we started with three. That's how it works, Jeff. And then they're like, "Well, <laughs> let's, let's get a few more, and then a few more, and then uh, apparently they can't be introduced to each other unless they're basically like the same size. So if you have some, oh really? Whatever full grown ones, that. and you get some chicks, you have to wait till the chicks get bigger to mix them up. So this is all my wife's hobby. So she's like. So she's like, so what you do one night in the middle when it's dark, when the chicks are finally grown, you put them in to the hen house and they wake up and just kind of look around at each other. It's like, where'd you come from? Hey. You know, kind of thing. So that's how, how they kind of get introduced to each other. So, uh, but yeah, we've, we've got this little house. It's not really, it's like a little house in the back of our yard and they re she and my daughter rebuilt it into this chicken coop and we got, got about 10 of them down there. So does your daughter have set a stand out front and sell fresh eggs? Is that... And sometimes we need to. If we ever go out of town, you come back, those chickens, they don't stop producing. So yeah, you come back they never stop. <laughs> and there's like two or three dozen eggs. So we'll give them to my parents or my you know, family or whatever kind of a thing. But uh, we could sell them, that's for sure. Y'all had pigs growing up. Did y'all have chickens? No, we never did. My mom always wanted, but my dad was like, no, nah, I ain't But y'all had chickens I did have a traumatic dating. experience with a chicken when I was young. Um, I was just minding my own business. And this rooster just crawls all the way up my back, starts pecking the back of my neck and... I'm pretty Ouch. sure I had the highest pitched scream in the world trying to run around in the backyard of my friend's yeah. place. It was hilarious. It yeah. was so good. The well, entire team was And that's actually what led to me. the growth of our chicken population <laughs> is that the first three, there was three, three, they looked the same. And apparently you can't tell if they're a rooster or not. So until they get a little older, and then we discovered that his name was Pip, that Pip was the rooster. So uh, Pip had to go to the rooster farm, and so we we got new ones. So then we got three more, and then we got five more, et cetera. So, so we've only had one rooster out of the group, and uh, we no longer have uh, Pip. Dude was a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was a jerk. It's all right. So why chickens? What was what was the? Uh, my wife's always had an affinity for you know the country. Her parents live on um, like a hundred acres out of out of town. Um, they've always had horses and ponies. Um, and again, some of the other people in our in our little community uh, had chickens, and so she would be friends with them and learn more about them. And she's like, then my daughter's grade school at the time when she was still in grade school, they had three chickens they wanted to show and incubate and all this, and then. All of a sudden, I think it was like April or May, they're like, okay, who wants to take the chickens home? So my daughter Kate's like, we do. You know? <laughs> so, mom's not going to say no to chickens when right, she's growing right, up with exactly. them. Right, exactly. So then that's how it kind of built. And it's actually kind of fun to let them out. They've got a nice little run, but let them out in the yard. And they'll eat a lot of mosquitoes and stuff. And they're just kind of fun to, to sit there and watch and peck the ground. I don't know. It's kind of relaxing. <laughs> so anything new? What, what's coming up new? Anything new with Icon or Vivid or anything new with RX System? What's the... To, Give us a little uh, view into the future. Sure. So, you know, the main thing is we're always trying to, you know, reinvest, uh, you know, our profits in a new equipment or expansion and you know, that sort of thing. And so, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we, we knocked down some walls and we built a new area for like a, we call it a board press. A board press is what you make pill cards with, um, you know, so we're really, you know, aggressively trying to grow that. There's there's new automation coming out uh, consistently on, on long term care. And you had Bill Holmes on a couple of times ago and he talked about his new uh, pill card filler. Uh, you know, Sinmen's out there, Doses is out there. So you know, we have to keep up with those type of new technologies. It's a different type of product than what we're traditionally would sell. Um, you know, like I said, Icon's got the new color uh, model, which is outstanding. You know, Vivid's just basically new to the market. And they're going to keep adding features just like, you know, Icon did once upon a time. When, when Icon came out, it didn't have the Pioneer interface. It didn't have the pictures. It didn't have this or that. So, you know, Vivid's a, it's an up-and-comer, so we'll see where that ends up in the next six months to a year. Um, and the only other major thing, like I said, at our, at our, uh, uh, what I'm trying to come up with is that, that BioCap label called the Prime BioCap program, where again, we can do the digitally printed labels, which to me really helps with the branding. It helps promote the workflow or reduce workflow by promoting the refill apps, et cetera. And one other uh, quick thing about that is we can allow customers to order smaller runs where right now, if you ordered custom caps from us, we can make a custom cap, a two color imprint, but you have to buy, let's say 12 cases of caps. Well, with the new program, I'm going to make the minimum only six cases. So a lot more pharmacies will be able to invest in this type of thing 
and the market their service is better because the minimums are smaller. Right. That'd be at a story. That's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice. More approachable. Yeah. Yes. Yep. hundred percent. So, yep. I think we're okay. uh, toward the end of the, of the time, Derek, it's, it's been a pleasure having you on. It was nice to, uh, actually we're always at the trade shows and going in yeah. multiple directions and always stop by and say hi. Cause you're always, always a pleasure, but, uh, it's nice to learn a little bit more and, and share that with everybody. So thank you. Yeah, for joining I really appreciate us you today. having me and inviting me and I had a great time. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Derek. Thank you, Derek. Okay, have a great day. We'll you see too. You. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you for watching the Catalyst Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and or following us. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more amazing pharmacy people like you. Follow Pioneer Rx on your preferred social media platform for the latest up-to-date pharmacy news and content.